Welcome to Intuitive Art Sales. This is the show where I, Jessica Craddock, am going to teach you how to source your art marketing from within. You're going to practice claiming that authentic art business that you want and leading it the most natural way for you to get there. You're going to learn to get connected to your intuition, your confidence, and your community so that you can sell your art consistently while holding strong boundaries on your work-life balance. Welcome back to Intuitive Art Sales. I am here with Olivia Franklin, who is an artist who paints anatomical self-portraits with anatomy as symbolism to evoke raw emotions. Some of her subjects are motherhood, mental health, and postpartum anxiety. And she's at a growing point in her business where she's getting into markets, her online views are going up, she's painting every day, she's getting into a pretty good place. Welcome, Olivia. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. It's so good to see you. I haven't gotten to chat with you in a while, so I'm excited to do this today. Yeah, me too. (laughs) I actually invited you to be a guest on my podcast because I had seen something on threads where you were talking about being frustrated with Instagram. And I was like, ooh, that would be a good topic. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I don't know if this is going to lead to like a mental switch or a a strategy switch, or maybe you should just be off Instagram and do something else. I'm I'm just curious where this is going to go. So fill me in. That is actually something that I've been considering is just completely getting off Instagram or maybe just using it as, you know, more of a diary and and for me and not necessarily an audience and then moving on to like different platforms like Pinterest or I'm focusing more on that because that seems to be where I'm growing really well. Interesting. Yeah. Instagram, I have a lot of negative feelings towards Instagram and I don't want to be negative. <laughs> so, hey, can I just um, say having negative feelings doesn't mean you are negative. It just means that there's something that needs shifting. And sometimes if you don't yeah. explore what's happening there you can't quite figure out where the shift needs to happen so I'm going to give you permission to express any negative feelings that you have and ask anyone who's listening to not then make that mean about Olivia she's a negative person is that okay yes thank you yes Yes. go ahead that would be great so Instagram is a really hard place right now because I feel like nobody is seeing anything I'm even having trouble, you know, seeing things that of people that I'm following, which is really hard because I want to see everything and I want to engage with everything. But yeah, the views are just going nowhere. And even when you post something, I feel like I'll post four times in a day. Oh, wow. And it's just cricket. I try to consistently post at least once or twice every Every day. day. That's a lot. Every day. Have you experimented with posting less? No, I have not. I feel like in the past I posted less. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe that's my issue. Well, there's so many factors, right? Yeah. I personally, and this is not going to be right for everybody. You have to experiment and find out what happens when you do the thing. But if Mm -hmm. I post more than once a day, I feel like the views get almost cut in half for those posts because I think what's happening is they're getting split. Like you either see one or you see the other. I don't know that that's true, but that is what has happened for me. And so I'm curious if you are really going all in and trying to post twice a day, Maybe if you gave a little bit of breathing room between, maybe that would make you way happier. I don't know. Probably. It has been affecting my mental health. Yeah, that's a lot. And I know you got a baby. Um, Maybe not a baby anymore, but your baby. Two toddlers. (laughs) I guess it's just finding a balance of posting too much and not posting. Can I actually ask you a question? Yeah. What is your goal with Instagram? 
overarching, what are you looking for? I'm looking to connect with others, but I'm also looking to send people to my website to make sales. Okay. Making an income is like very important to me, especially right now. My family is about to, we're about to move out of the house that we're currently living in and finding a new one. Um, I'm exploring all kinds of options with that. And we don't really know where we're going to go because money is so tight. My main thing is just not giving up on my business. Good. Even even though money is not really coming in very much, I'm still going to paint. Okay. So let me just talk through some things with you and see where we go. Okay. I love Pinterest. Pinterest is great for views. Yeah. Also, in my experience, Pinterest is, and, and this is for my business. Again, like there are no hard, fast rules. But for my business, when people find me on Pinterest, there is a longer period before they become a client than with a Instagram where I'm able to connect with them person to person. I actually, one thing that has kind of flipped my view on Instagram is not trying to grow it. And actually, the less I try to grow it, the better it grows. The more, Hmm. instead of trying to find more people or help more people find me on Instagram, I'm really focusing on interacting with the people that are already there that I see that I love. Do I do that 24 hours a day? No, I don't. But when I have the time, I really focus on using it with DMs is one of my biggest reasons to log on to the app. Sometimes I'll scroll just to scroll, but like you, even then, a lot of times I don't see the people that I'm wanting to see and I get into the Ooh, that's a interesting quote or that's a cool project I could try. And I watch those videos. The algorithm is very smart. It knows what you're paying attention to. And if you start Zoom scrolling while you're in bed and just trying to check out, it registers that that's the content you're taking in and that's what it shows you. So part of it is being really purposeful about Am I on Instagram just to check out or am I on Instagram to see certain people and letting the other stuff kind of float by? Another thing that I've done is I've started adding people to close friends. Have you tried that feature? That works pretty well. And then creating content with those people in mind, usually one specific person. So if I'm having a conversation with this person, They say something that triggers something. I go create a piece of content for that person. It goes out to everybody. But a lot of times people will go, oh, it's like you read my mind. I'm like, well, I didn't. I listened to that person and you just happen to resonate with that person. Yeah. That actually seems so logical and practical to just focus on the people that are following you. I just struggle with so many spam account Mm. following or just not knowing who is a real person. I can typically tell, but sometimes it feels like I get a ton of follows and it's really just like a fake account. Don't even Uh, look at, well, I take that back. Do look at them because I do like to look at the people who start following me because I want to see who that is. Right. Yeah. And if it feels like a good thing to do in the moment, I might message them. If it's a spam account, I pretty much just block them immediately. I feel like the more you just take swift action and put them out of your mind, the better, the, the less it affects you. Yeah. Block, 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 block. It's very block. true. <laughs> it's okay to block and that doesn't affect you, right? No. I actually don't get that many spam accounts. I do get them following me, but I don't get that many messages or comments. And I think possibly that's a result of just blocking people. 
I try to block. I get a lot of messages. I have tried to go into the system, you know, or the settings and put in words like, oh, block these kind of messages or sayings or whatever. It does help a little. And so, yeah, that has been an improvement. Um, yeah, I really just need to focus on the people that are on my account that are following me because there are quite a few people that I feel like I've really been able to connect with. Can't completely write Instagram off. I've been able to connect with other small businesses, lots of artists, even local people near me, which has been really great. Yes. Can I say yes again? Yes. That, that <laughs> yeah. is the mindset switch. It's not how do more people find me or how do I get 800 views on this or how do I whatever. It's those people. How do I spend more time with those people? And you kind of do have to train yourself and the algorithm to make that happen. Hey there, lovely listeners of Intuitive Art Sales. It's Jessica Craddock, your guide to navigating the exciting world of marketing from an authentic place. I have a special request for you. I have shared tips and insights and stories on how to connect with your intuition boost your confidence, nurture your community, and maintain those all-important boundaries to create a fulfilling work-life balance. And the amount of support you have shown me is incredible, and your feedback is invaluable. So here's the ask. Would you please take just a few moments to leave a rating and a review for Intuitive Art Sales? You can share your thoughts, your breakthroughs, or simply why you love tuning in. It is this little small action that can have a big impact on artists worldwide, just like you. And I also want to say thank you for being a part of this family and for helping me find others who need help on their creative path. Your unique voice matters, and together we're making the world a more inspired and vibrant place. So with so much gratitude, thank you for rating and reviewing us on your favorite podcast platform. It means the world to me. So I don't think I finished my thought from earlier, but there are three parts to marketing. I think I say this on every single episode. There's visibility, there's nurture, there's sales. Pinterest, Mm -hmm. in my mind, is a great platform for visibility. Instagram, the way that I like to use it, is a great platform for nurturing. So when you can kind of separate it that way and start to see them as separate pieces, It makes it a lot less taxing of, I have to be all the things and succeed all the ways on all the places. When you get a new follower, do you typically do like a private message and you like introduce yourself or like say hi and tell them thanks for following? I don't always have time to go through all of them. I try to make it a practice to when I see a new follower, go check them out. If they seem like someone who is a good fit for me, for my personality, for my business, someone I'm interested in, I do try to message them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be anything groundbreaking. Like, hey, I noticed when you started following me and I really love your XYZ. Nice to meet you. Just as simple as that, like. Pretend they're a person, because they are. (laughs) And what would you say to that person if you... We're face-to-face. We're face-to-face, exactly. And you happen to have all this information at your fingertips about them, which is also really cool. Yes. (laughs) I've been working on that. I was trying to connect with more of the people that follow me um, that way through messaging. Another way that you can start to kind of integrate the two as a strategy is reposting either reels or posts onto Pinterest and making the link to follow you on Instagram. I wouldn't make that like your main thing, but if you know you have let's say 10 to 25 percent of your posting on Pinterest going back to your Instagram account, 
they can find you on both platforms. And then you can, they can not only know you exist, but you can nurture them as well. The only other way to really grab people from Pinterest is newsletter, enticing them to sign up for that. Are you doing that? Because otherwise um, no. it's just like they just see and then they're gone. Yeah, the, I've been getting a lot of traffic to my website on specific pieces that are popular on Pinterest. But then it's just like cricket. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of traffic, but it's not converting. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, what is it that I need to do, whether I need to update my website or I need to do a different strategy on posting. Are they going to a high priced item or a low priced item? I'd say it's a low priced item. Can you give me a number? 150. For a Pinterest, it's probably a middle priced item. Okay. Just because there's no anything in between. It's just, hey, look, this thing, you want to buy it? Yes, no. And most of the time, that's going to be a no, just because that's how conversion rates work. Especially with Pinterest. It takes a lot more traffic to turn into a purchase click. So if there were a middle step in there where you could somehow grab them so there was not just a look goodbye, you'd have a much higher chance of some of those people that are viewing turning into, oh, I want to know more about that person. Oh, I really connect with her work. Oh, 150. You see kind of the difference there? Yeah. Which I'm going to be honest and say creating a sign-up form for a newsletter from Pinterest, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error to find one that works well for you. Do you have, you have a newsletter, don't you? Like email subscribers and everything? Yeah. 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 I send out a monthly newsletter and... I send a couple of emails if there's a new painting or like recently I sent out an email about a bunch of new prints that I added to my store and stuff like that. How do you get people on that newsletter list? I typically will make a post on Instagram, whether it's in my stories or a regular post. And I also do market and get people to sign up. If I were to give you an assignment, I would like you to try adding some opt-in forms around your website and paying attention to the numbers. Meaning, how many people saw the pop-up and how many people signed up for the pop-up? A typical conversion rate, this is going to sound really terrible, but it's what it is. A typical conversion rate for a pop-up, or not, not, not necessarily a pop-up, but a email sign-up form is about 1% to 3%. So if you get 100 people viewing it and one person signs up, it's okay. Okay. I actually don't have a pop-up on my website. I used to be anti-pop-up, but I do a ton of testing. Like, for example, I have a blog post. I'll have a sign-up form in the middle. I'll have one at the end. I have a pop-up that I think comes up on exit intent, meaning when they're about to leave. And I test those things to see who signs up for this one, who signs up for this one, which one's the highest. The pop-up's always the highest. Yeah, that's interesting. I know. And I hate pop-ups. I but... need to put my pop-up back up. <laughs> I was recently, it was suggested that I take the pop-up down because it was on my website specifically you get on and it instantly pops up and it was just like in your face. That was too much. So I need to figure out if I can like time it to where people aren't just bombarded by the pop-up instantly and they can take some time to breathe and look around and then, oh, pop-up. So the one that in my testing, I'm going to keep saying this, it's going to be different for everybody. In my testing, yeah. the exit intent pop-up worked the best. Because it was, oh, you're about to leave. Wait, do you want this? What website builder are you using? Shopify. I haven't 
dug around in Shopify as much as I should. It is one of the platforms that definitely are my higher recommendations, maybe my highest recommendation, but I am not familiar with what types of forms they have and can they give you the data on all the numbers of which ones are working and how many options do they have and all of that. But if I were you, I would Google Shopify opt-in types and start with that, see what's available, and then create a couple different ones. And then, again, I love Google, Just Google something like, how can I see, or can I see the conversion rate for my opt-in on Shopify or for my pop-up or for my footer or whatever that is? And it should be able to give you pretty quickly, here's how you do that. Because if you don't okay. pay attention to the numbers, you're just guessing. Right. Okay. So once you've figured that out, you know how to put them on, you've put them on, you know how to look at the numbers, just leave them there for a month. At the end of the month, go back and see which one did the best. And I'm not necessarily saying take the others off, but we're going to focus on the one that did the best. And we're going to make a change to it. Maybe it's, I'm going to add a picture of me, or I'm going to change the incentive, or I'm going to change the headline, or something along those lines. I'm going to change the text on the button, like one one big change, and then give it another okay. month. See if that number goes up or down. And I don't mean number of views, I mean conversion rate, which is the number of people who sign up divided by the number of views. So if you see that two people signed up on that form, 100 people saw it, you've got a 2% conversion rate. And then we make one change, and then we go back and look again. Did that 2% go up or down? Going down, change the thing that you changed back and change something else. Okay. And it's just like every month you go in and you change one thing. Can I get that number up? Can I get that number up? And then maybe one of them is working a lot better than the others. And so you're not sure if it's because it's a pop-up or if it's because you put your picture on it, but that one's working well. So what can we take from that one to add to the other one? Well, I think it was the picture. So I'm going to take the picture and I'm going to add it into this other form. Can I get that number up? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's all very valuable. Which it sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not. I mean, the initial setup is, but making one change and looking at your numbers every month is a pretty simple thing to do. You could do it in an hour. And the higher you get that rate, even if you're not growing your views, you'll still be growing your amount of people joining. Right, yeah. And since you're doing well on Pinterest... I want to find a couple of ways to capture those people. So one of those being, we're going to start testing opt-ins on our website. And the other one being, we're going to add in some of our Instagram posts that link back to our Instagram account. And then on Instagram, we're using that as a nurturing place. And the less you care about how many new people it's finding, I predict the better it will do and the happier you will be overall. What do you think? Questions? I love that idea. Should I have like one page being a landing page, then you have one at the footer, and then you have a pop-up. So, and those are the three that I would be basically comparing every month. Put in as many as you want. The more the better. Okay. Okay. I mean, don't have like 15 <laughs> pop-ups that are going to like fire after each other. Let's say you have a flow bar that is essentially when they come in, instead of that big pop-up in front of them, it's a little bar at the top that says, would you like to join my newsletter? And it doesn't cover anything up. You can have that. Okay. And then you can have an exit incident pop-up. And then you can have it in the footer of your website. And then you can have a in your contact page and like just... Use them. The more you have, okay. I have a really hard time finding email opt-ins on many artists' websites. Like, I want to sign up for their newsletter. And if I've clicked out of the initial pop-up, which I do because I want to see what's on the page, then I can't find one. 
and I can't sign up. Like, make it easy. Yeah. Sometimes I have trouble finding just even art that they're selling. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm, I'm not one for like, spend all this time on your website and make it perfect. But when it fits into the strategy, like we're talking about right now, then mm -hmm. it's worth the time. We're not just doing it to do it because someone told us to do it. But also, if you're telling people to go look at your website to buy art, have art for them to find. So, yeah. <laughs> you should probably have art on there. Have all the options. <laughs> Tell them how to buy it. Don't just show a picture of it. I have noticed that about myself, like even in the past, like I'll look back at my Instagram and I'm like, oh, I said I was going to do this and I said I was going to do that. So reminding myself to view my past posts or whatever is something that I'm trying to do more often because I don't want to forget to do something that I said I was going to do. It's kind of a good accountability in a way, but it also keeps my plans on track because with ADHD, I get sidetracked and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now on medication and that has helped tremendously. And so I think now that I can actually think in a lot of ways, I'm able to look at the things that I've missed. Do you have something in front of you that's like a, not a everyday step-by-step -step plan but like a overarching here's my project that I'm working on here's the four things I want to do every week type of moment I just whatever feels right I just go with the slow basically I don't I haven't done that okay so I'm gonna say let's go create that get out a piece of paper say every month I'm gonna check my opt-ins and I'm going to change one thing. Okay. My project right now is... I'm trying to create more work for the upcoming markets in the spring. That's basically okay. my project. Let me rephrase that. So I like to have kind of a couple of things on my list. One is, what is the art that I'm making? If I have a project, when I say project, what I mean is like, it sounds like you recently opened a Pinterest account and started building the boards. And like that was a project, right? That was something okay. that you were starting and needed more attention. That became a project. And then I like to, like, you know, kind of have a focus of the month. Am I focusing on getting seen by more people? Am I focusing on nurturing? Am I focusing on selling? And just even if you just had those three things written down in front of you. And then every week say, okay. what are my top three goals? But you have a kind of overarching, these are the, the big picture things I want to do this week. What are my main focuses? I think that would help. Okay. So to summarize, what are your takeaways? I'm going to focus more on my goals every month. I'm going to use Instagram as a nurturing place and pinterest as a visibility visibility yes <laughs> i'm sorry that's okay yes and working on my pop-up on my website my opt-ins i'm gonna rephrase that one just to kind of summarize the strategy but we're going to work on finding ways to grab people from Pinterest since that's where they're finding you mm -hmm. and give them more of a experience with you, whether it's through Instagram or your newsletter. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So Olivia, thank you. This was fun. We didn't really even talk about Instagram troubles that much, but do you feel like, do you feel better? I do feel better. It's just talking it out and knowing what you're doing is the right thing or just figuring out your new strategy that yeah. helps a lot. Right. Okay. So where can people find your work about motherhood and mental health and postpartum anxiety if they're looking? My website is ofranklinart.com and I am on Instagram as ofranklinart. Facebook and Pinterest, threads, all of it. Um, all of it. What's your favorite <laughs> place to connect? Let's ask that question. 
Instagram. Instagram is Instagram. my favorite place to go. Um, mm. Yeah. So I'm glad we didn't say throw it out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Okay. Can you spell Franklin? Just O Franklin Art. O F R A N K L I N A R T. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, Olivia. I will thank let you. you go to take care of your kiddos and we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can get new episodes loaded straight onto your phone as soon as they're ready. And as an added bonus, when you subscribe, it helps other artists find this advice so we can learn how to make our art more valuable as a community. What could be better than that? And be sure to say hello and let me know you've been listening over on Instagram. My handle is at artistmarketcup. I would love to hear from you.